which of our chapters can mobilize the most donors on that day to raise the most money or to have the most impact or, you know, does it have to be revenue based, something like that. This also works well if you're a higher education institution. You may have alumni clubs uh, that may get, get, may get together to celebrate Thanksgiving, uh, things like that. By project or school, so this is a variant of the competition model. So, you know, maybe um, in the case of Miriam's Puppies and Kittens Foundation, uh, maybe I have an opportunity. I can either give to, um, you know, to support more puppies, support more kittens, um, support some baby donkeys, and I can pick which one is most important to me, and based on those, there might be a leaderboard or incentives. Uh, similarly, you know, if you are a healthcare organization, I'll give a more realistic example, Perhaps you engage in patient care and research and um, um, caretaker enablement and things like housing families while they're getting treated. If these are all different activities that you do and different reasons why your donor segments and your constituent segments might care about you, that might be a great um, program and project model to have them doing Tuesday to say, give to the project or the mission aspect that we have that matters most to you. And finally, inter-organizational. This is the rarest type of model. Um, it probably won't work for most folks on Giving Tuesday, but you know, if um, I have the Miriam's uh, Kittens and Puppies Foundation and Matthew has the Matthews Puppies Foundation because Matthew hates cats, maybe we decide to go up against each other and say, hey, we're both, uh, we're both raising money. Let's see whose donors care the most. Uh, so that's just, you know, if you have a really good relationship with somebody that does something similar to you, generally speaking, this works best for higher education athletic events, but I did want to make sure that um, we reviewed it. So the key questions you want to ask yourself 